What's up, fan geeks? Happy New Year. Um, I decided since today is my first day of teaching and I have a couple hours in between students, I'm gonna film a really quick clarinet hack video, which I haven't done in quite some time. Anyways, I'll just get right into it since you're here for the clarinet hacks. So the first hack is to, while you're practicing, record yourself. But when we hear a recording of our voices, we're like, oh, that's what I sound like. Um, it's kind of like that, but not as cringy. Everything is vibrating and it vibrates all the way up to our ears. So what we're hearing isn't necessarily what other people are hearing. Um, so it's good to get into uh, the habit of setting up a recorder or an iPhone um, a couple feet away and just practicing like you normally would. I know that a lot of times once the record button is pushed, things get all weird and you make mistakes that you didn't make before five minutes ago. Um, but it's a good habit to get into just to, first of all, uh, practice with like knowing that you're being recorded, um, having sort of that little bit of pressure added to your practice. And it's also good so that when you listen back, you can hear, oh, I'm rushing in this measure and I never, I didn't think I was, or okay, I'm holding this whole note, but every time there's a beat, I'm blowing extra air so I can hear every pulse. Just as a couple of examples, things that you might not realize you're doing will become very clear once you record yourself for two. And I do apologize because I am at the place that I teach at and next door to me, even though it's pretty soundproof it's playing ACDC, or they were a little while ago. Anyway, if you can hear guitar, that's why. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Okay, the second hack is to practice for the performance. So I've talked a lot about practicing and just being stupidly prepared for your performance. If you're doing an audition and you're standing up and you know the audition is gonna be standing up, why would you practice sitting down? Um, definitely practice standing up. You're practicing sitting down and then you'll stand up and you leave your stand at this height. You wanna bring your stand to where it is here. So just make sure that you bring it up so that you can actually see your music. Sometimes it needs to be said. So practice standing if you're gonna be standing. Practice sitting if you're gonna be sitting. If you're wearing a specific dress or tuxedo or tie or anything that you normally don't wear every day when you're practicing, Try practicing wearing what you're going to be wearing because sometimes like with women's dresses and like tuxedos, you can feel tight in the shoulders. You can feel tight in like your waist area. Like if, if things are super fitted, you just want to make sure that you can breathe and move comfortably because if you can't breathe, then what's the point? And you also want to practice wearing the shoes that you're going to wear, especially if you're standing um, women or men, if you're wearing high heels the day of your performance, practice in your heels standing up. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it shouldn't go unsaid. If you're wearing heels for the performance and if you're standing for the performance, practice at least once wearing heels just so that you're not all of a sudden four inches taller walking on these little stilts because I've seen people who are wearing heels and they're on stage and they lose their balance and they tip over and it's very stressful. Third hack is how to play altissimo notes quietly. Um, so recently, a couple months ago, I broke my foot and I also uploaded a performance of me playing the Jean Jean arabesque, which has very high, very quiet notes. And I did have a comment asking to do a video on how to play high altissimo notes quietly. So the way that I do it um, is first to just practice long tones. Like I'm just going to play a D and this reed is bone dry. So let's see. You want to play at a, at a comfortable volume at a sound that you like first. So just hold out a note until you get the sound that you want. And then once you have a sound that you like, bring the volume down. and see how quiet you can get it. If you can get it to fade away, you're already on par. 
Something that's a little trick is if you sit on the very edge of your seat, normally play at an angle like this. If you bring your clarinet in, it changes the angle of the mouthpiece so that you actually are putting more pressure on the bottom lip and it like the angle kind of changes the way the clarinet sits on your bottom lip. So as opposed to this, It's a little extreme for what I would do, but if you bring your clarinet in to you, I am so distracted right now. If you bring your clarinet in and um, just use fast air, but a little bit of air, that's how you get a high altissimo note. So basically by bringing the bell of your clarinet closer to you, you can play quieter high notes. But this is a, a really quick hack. Um, when you're performing, get a blazer. Um, like I know that with women, like you can wear, you know, pretty much anything as long as it's like covers you and it's black. But something that will um, be actually really useful um, is finding a blazer with pockets. So this is my concert blazer actually that I'm using. Um, I also use it for teaching too because gotta look profesh, but it's got pockets right here and right here and they zip. I know that like with pockets in women's clothing, they're not super uh, spacious, but I in this pocket, I usually put my reeds and in this pocket, I usually put my swab and or cigarette paper um or you know the paper that you use under the pads to make them uh in case you get like a little water bubble underneath you know we don't want that to happen so um when you're on stage if you're playing and you notice that there's a little gurgling under your bubble you can just like really quickly grab a piece of cigarette paper throw it under there uh you can swab really quickly just so that you don't have a million things around you on the floor i like to bring out a little tiny um black water bottle that i have specifically for concerts that doesn't make a lot of sound when you open it and also my reeds in one pocket and my swab in the other pocket so that if anything happens on stage i am prepared and the last thing i will recommend is um practicing with a checklist i know that um doing college auditions or any kind of audition um things can pile up that you need to practice uh, as an example always give my students a a scale thing to learn so like this week i want you to memorize all of your major scales that are sharp and then like another week it'll be all the harmonic minors that are flats or or something you know um which is how i grew up learning um any sort of technique or scale exercise any sort of etude then you have your solo repertoire, maybe you have orchestral excerpts, maybe you have band music that you need to work on, orchestra music that you need to work on. When I was auditioning for colleges, I would basically just like write everything out. And there's actually, there's a really good practice checklist that you can buy online and I'll link that below, the one that my students make because basically I will write what they need to do and the goal. So it's like, okay, this, um, this week I need you to memorize um all of your major scales through four sharps four flats and chromatic and our goal is going to be to get it to quarter note equals 80 for example it's good just to lay out everything so that you don't um sit down and kind of aimlessly practice you sit down with the purpose um because it's one thing to play through the first movement of a sonata and get through all the stuff that you know how to play and then that's you know 10 minutes of playing stuff that you already know how to play and then you get to these two bars that are really really tough and you just kind of like half-ass it and then you keep going it's like i know i need to practice those two bars so for the first three days of my practice session i'm not going to look at anything in that sonata other than those two bars and i'm going to get really good at those two bars and those two bars are going to be the thing that i am best at so turn your weaknesses into strengths because you can do that through practicing 
Um, so that's just a couple of things that I would suggest incorporating into your practice session. See if they work. Let me know below in the comments if they do work. Also, let me know below in the comments if you want to see anything in particular, if you want me to expand on anything or any questions that you have about clarinet. I'm happy to answer those. Um, in the meantime, um, go practice.